This was supposed to be your presentation, but I felt it becoming an answer to talk to you about volunteering. Because you are the people who are creating initiatives, and you are the people who are very zealous, energetic, powerful, and have vision. So I scrapped my presentation because it's not right to talk to somebody like you about volunteering. It's a pride. And I squeak, what do you call it? Can you read this one? <laughs> you, are you Arab? Yeah. Yeah, you, this is Arab. Shots fired, I'm sorry. Alright. Oh, man. No Arab? Oh, I'm Javier. I did what? That means that actually we are on the same boat. I don't know how to speak English and we don't know how to speak Arabic. This is the fun. So I will start with asking some questions. You have all your pen and paper. And uh, I was in Turkey a few weeks ago, and some young girl was talking about right loop or left loop of my brain. When I finish my talk today, you have to tell me, am I one of the people who have the right loop, right? Or the left loop? Okay. Yeah. Are you welcome? Oh, I used to be a doctor. How do you know? Because you have glasses and you look like me. I see. Even your glasses look like my glasses. <laughs> okay, now we talk about my right. And at the end of the talk, tell me how many of you will think that I'm right to? or left loop, or no loop. Middle loop. Because my, my thesis here was on spinal bifida and neural tube bifida. Anyway. Second question is, second question is, this for you. Are you a group of intelligent or stupid? Educated or ignorant? Okay? Aware or sleeping duties, okay? Crazy or wise? And what's your role in life? This for you to answer at the end of my presentation. I'm not going to give you a speech like sweet nothing. And I'm not going to ask you to celebrate achievement you have not been a part of. So don't come and tell me the great Sahaba or the great Khalifa or the great history of Islam. Tell me what are you doing and what you intend to do. Don't be nostalgic. Okay? The nostalgic people have no loops because they always live in the past. They never realize the enormity of the problems surrounding them in the, at the time being, not to say that they cannot see the future. I have not started my talk yet. So, you have to answer this question and tell me later. The third question for us now, what is the speed of life surrounding us? What is your brains? You are educated. You think and you think that you are the future. Okay? The speed of life surrounding us. And if the speed of life faster than the speed of time, and why? You answer. I said I'm not going to give you a talk to seduce you or to let you to relax, to massage your spirit. Not of my talks. You answer the question. Who can stop? 
Brady, talk to the stupid one. I am the stupid one. Brainy, what's the speed of light? And is it faster than the speed of time or not? Because the volunteers like yourself would like to make the change are change makers. And change makers be and be ahead of the time. Change maker never were behind the time or only living the time. <laughs> They create the future for the people who are coming, the generation to follow. So, who going to answer? Can I have a sip? It's halal? It's not whiskey? Oh, no. There's halal whiskey in, in heaven. When we go to heaven, there's halal champagne. Halal beer? <laughs> Answer. Don't be shy. Mm, you want to say something? Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. You want to come in and stand next to me? Okay. Stand up and talk. Please. Come on, come stand up, stand up. You are a leader. Raise your voice. Raise your head. Talk to the public. And, and compete with her for next year's president. <laughs> she has to be out of the office next year. <laughs> but she has to take her place. Okay. okay. Yeah, go on. Um, I'm just thinking about in terms of time and light. Yeah. We are, we are alive and we're living within a time frame. Very good. So how can, how can life be faster than time? Very good. Neither do I. Neither do I. I don't have an answer. But this thought came to me because I'm coming to talk to you. When you talk to the change makers, you have to let them think even if you don't have the answer. Well, stand up. You have a loud voice. Yeah, kind of talk to the public. Um, so one, one thing I was thinking about right now is that I guess the measurement of life is time. Uh, and, and then when you define life, it's moments and uh, incidents that happen in your lifetime, for example, ch uh, childhood, adulthood, etc. So the real question that sh we should be asking, therefore, is how quick is time and how quick does time go by? And I guess one good way of actually thinking about time is when Allah SWT talks about uh, time in Surah uh, Al-Asr, when, when he uses the word Al-Asr, um, most of us have heard Muhammad Ali Khan's tafsir on Surah Al-Asr, and that word, how it comes from the word Asir, which in Arabic means juice. And how juice is squeezed out from a, from a fruit. Likewise, that is how time is in terms of it's running out from us. So that's the question that I think we should probably ask ourselves: that how quick is time, and how much do we value time in order to actually value our lives? Thank you. Very good. See, the answer. Her answer is right. His answer is right. My question is wrong because I'm the wrong man. Okay. But you have to answer it. The challenge, if you have got the stupid and wrong question, you have to answer it. And this is the challenge. If you want to become a change maker, you have to meet the challenge and get a result out of it. And overtake the challenge, win the challenge, and win the gold medal. Any other answer? Yes, sir. Stand up, please. So, um... Well, this, well, time is a construct. Time is, we perceive time. Time doesn't, from, I'm a physics student, so very time good. isn't very, it's not something static or something that physically exists in a very absolute way. So nowadays people say time passes by so quickly, not like life before, but that's just what we think. We have an expectation of how much we feel time, sh how much time passes and what, feeling associated is it, with it is, um, so the speed of life is just, what the speed of life is our experience of how time has passed versus the speed of time, which is what we think time should be, but actually time, those are, the, those are two sides of the same coin, um, and 
I think we should focus less about the speed of time and more like what we do with it. Thank you. So from, from <laughs> philosophy to social to physics, three different answers, but all are direct. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I carry on talking. <laughs> Is that right? Okay, anybody else want to answer these questions? Well, we'll move to the other ones. More stupid questions. Today we talk about stupid questions and the right loop, or the left loop, or the no loop. If I become a no loop, um, it will tell me a lot, because there's many people with no loops. Govern country as well. <laughs> okay, any other, any other answer? No? Yes, sister. Stand up, please. Shout out to me, or shout at me. The thing I just said. Okay. Thank you. Any other answer? So we can move to which? Yes. Yes. Come on. Stand up, please. Um, I think you can take into account what you consider life as. So if you consider life as just this life now, well then that's like around eight years. But if you take into account the afterlife, which is a term, and when time is going to exist because it's not a limited amount of time, that would be longer. As in time only went out in this world and not so in the So can you say it again because my, my intelligence is... is, is <laughs> like is, is time, in the, time only exists in this world. Yeah. Whereas in the afterlife, there's no time, there's no idea of time ah, because it's eternal. Good. So, yeah. It's pretty short. See how many answers? If you collect these, you know the diversity of the ability of the people to think in this room. Because each one of you might have a different answer for the same question. All right. Second push, second push, our number five. If the speed of life surrounding us is so fast, so fast, we cannot keep with it, what's our role? Hmm. You tell your first push. Get away from me. If we have a very fast life, which is difficult to catch, what's our role then? Okay? Do nothing. Oh, you want to say something? Go on. Stand up, please. Speak loud. Um, well, if we perceive the time being too fast, we should keep our life organized. It's our lack of organization and order in our life that causes, causes us to have to chase after life and chase what we have to do next. If we have order and if we have order and organization now, we can predict things in the future and then that way we can be ahead of time. Very good. So organization. What you are doing in process to organize. Nothing is done haphazardly. Every system that we're creating for life is organized by the Creator, Subhanahu wa Taala, and He is coordinating all the different systems which keep life intact. Whether it's in China, whether it's in South Africa, whether it's in this planet or different planets, <coughs> the world of organization. Let me ask another question because I'm a stupid man asking this kind of very simple, uh, low intellect question. <laughs> I see, uh, look, look at this. This was this me, I don't know, in the 90s. Okay? What's behind me? Why? Why is behind me? Sorry? Stand up, please. Why is behind me? Anybody else? <coughs> yes? Did you want it to be behind you or was it someone just came across and I said why? <laughs> Don't answer my question with a question, sir. <laughs> <laughs> ambitious. Ambitious to conquer or ambition? Ambition to I don't know use I don't know what me conquer means. <laughs> ambition to explore, yes? Um, do you have any side in front of the map? 
Sorry, I used to have. You just happened to stand up in front of you. It was just by chance. By chance. No, no, it was this one. This one, my desk. Oh, your desk. Ah, my desk was here. You see. Ah, nice. See it. Okay, so this is my desk, and this is my seat, and this this is my office. Okay. Yes, brother. Who was in front of you? Sorry. Who was in front of you? You wouldn't be able to see. Anybody else? Yes, yes. Stand up, please. Right, okay. It represents uh, interconnectedness and also... It, it represents what? Uh, interconnectedness. Connectedness. Yeah, and also, um, you can also represent like globalization. Globalization, and yes. And how like, as humans go out and know how to work with cave software or things. Very good, yeah, very good. <laughs> I was actually going to say this. I think it's... Oh, your thinking is global. You want your message to be global. And that's why. Okay. Anybody else? We're going to move to the other questions. Yes, brothers, sisters. Okay. Because, uh, what do you call it? Sky is not our limit. This was my proverb. Sky is our beginning, not our limit. Okay? And the planet is something that we live on. <laughs> I cannot navigate to that. <laughs> Can you stand up and say what she said? Yes, please. Tell them, please. Tell them, please. She said I didn't quite get that. Why she didn't get that? It's too much for them. Huh? It's too much. Too much for her. Yeah. <laughs> for for the phone, for the phone. <laughs> so she didn't get it. Sky is not our limit. Because the people who look for heaven should look at the sky as one creation of God that they have to pass it to something else. The test is on earth. Okay. To inhabit, to reconstruct, to discover, to save, to build. Then from this platform, you look at globe behind you or before you or the galaxies of God. And this is the meaning of how to be a Muslim. How to be a Muslim is not only to step to your village, to your avenue, to your ghettos, all the laws in Europe and America are being made tougher and difficult because of what? Because we do not, we do not want, or we did not want to move from our ghettos. We are ghetto lovers. That's why the law. <laughs> you love me? <laughs> I'm a ghetto. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are ghetto lovers. And then we complain. If we are truly Muslims, we should look at the galaxies of God, the planets, and we relate ourselves to them because we should be the discoverer. Is that right? Somebody called the discoverer to discover? To go to this beyond the imagination of others. But if we claim that we are the best ummah, the best ummah is not the ummah who can regurgitate the, the text of the holy book, but who can construct life for humanity and change the life for the betterment of humanity and discover the wealth of humanity for humanity. This is the best nation based on the true belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All right, if the speed of life is faster than us, Option one, sit and do nothing. Who can agree that we sit and do nothing? Raise your hand if we sit and do nothing. Samir. Samir. Ah, I'm the only one, huh? So all of you agree that you are not going to sit and do nothing. Fine? Clear? Uh, Miss, Miss, Miss President? <laughs> Thank you. The second one, <coughs> We get into the system, 
very crowded, very difficult. And we live into it. Like anybody else. Who can agree to do that? If you don't agree, stand and tell me. If you agree, stand and tell me. Sorry, stop. Yeah. Live in the system and be like anybody else and go with the flow. Go on. Yes, please. So, the reason why I disagree is because uh, I think that we shouldn't just be. Because it is a tough job to you just try and keep up with the world and the uh, speed of life. But it's important for us to be forward thinking people. Um, to be thinking uh, ahead in terms of next generations for people after us. Like, for example, our uh, uh, well, grandfathers, when they came to this country, they were thinking about us, which is why they built many massages and why we have kind of the institutions that are in place right now. Likewise, we should be thinking that far ahead as well. So we shouldn't just be thinking to today uh, and tomorrow, but rather for the next 10 years and 20 years. So we should be uh, ahead of everyone else. Thank you. Anybody else? Sisters? You have to compete with those people, with boys. <laughs> And be ahead of them. Yeah, uh. <laughs> Go on. Any other, any other answer? <laughs> yes. You know, let, 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 me, let me tell you something. The Arabic language has been there for Quran. We learn Arabic to understand the depth of the knowledge of Quran. I heard this from Sheikh Sharawi. I'm not sure if some Arabs of you know. Who is Sheikh Sharawi, Lech Sharawi, Rahmatullahi, one of the great scholars from Egypt? He said he, he mastered the Arabic language. He was one of the top in, 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 in that metaphor and everything. And when you listen to his uh, explanation, uh, you find that he, the, all the, the literacy of Arabic language is the driver of his explanation of Quran. And <coughs> so the more you know Arabic, the more you understand. Land. You see, that's why Allah sent to the arrogant Arab at that time a book by their own language, which they cannot write a verse of it. Is it a challenge? Challenge. You people are very arrogant in the Arabian Peninsula, okay, fine, but you are backwards. This is the book. With the language, go for it. They failed. The people who have who mastered Arabic language for 1,500 years. How about the people now who can uh, uh, say ah, ah, ba, ba? Even even the qualified people from Egypt and the others, they don't know how to speak Arabic. I'm not complaining about you, but see, you very low standard of university qualified Arabs who can speak Arabic. Coming back, anybody else, sister side, to answer the question? Yes, brother. <coughs> Yes, stand up. Because we have got BBC and ITV. <laughs> <laughs> we shouldn't be constrained by the world around us in terms of the good that we should be doing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us on this earth for the sole reason of doing good. To be a khulafa to you know, benefit and to further humanity. So the systems around us, all of this, although we, we are restrained by it on the short term, we shouldn't see it as something that you know we'll always be restrained by. We should always try to perceive it as something that we can, you know, regardless of what I'm talking about. Thank you. Is you different? Anybody else? Yes. Um, yeah, I think your question about this going with the flow, I would disagree because for some reason.
what he said at the beginning, this is a practical example of what you said and what the brother said. My father, who came here 56 years ago, did not speak English, was a liberal. Okay? But his vision was to build the community for you and for you and for the people who are coming from overseas to live in this country. Uneducated, but has the heart and the vision and the spirit. Education is not a university degree. Education is a life degree. That's why we keep learning day in and day out till we die. And to know the knowledge, Musa alayhi salam, once upon a time, he said that he thought that he was the most knowledgeable. That's why Allah sent him al khid alayhi salam. To teach him some knowledge that Musa does not have. Which is a knowledge straight from Allah. When he made the hole in the ship, when he on the boat, when he killed a boy, and when actually he built the falling wall for these uh, uh, orphans. The knowledge of this was not in Moses, in spite of the fact that he the most knowledgeable. He thought that he's the most knowledgeable. So knowledge is something that you keep seeking day in and day out. Yes, sister. Stand up, please, because the camera is looking at you. Great, okay. Um, I think a big issue in regards to the time aspect is that because we feel like it's going, or we perceive it to be going so quickly, and people have these like mental lists of like, I need to do this, 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 and this before I die, or before whatever, they feel like it's, it's too much, and it becomes overwhelming if they're not like on track with their plans, I guess, or things they want to accomplish. But like the brother was saying, it's not just for us, it's not just for your life, like what you do impacts people that go later on down the line. So I think to, the point is to be always striving anyways. And like it doesn't matter if you don't get to exactly where you've achieved with this and this, if you've made progress, and because that progress can be picked up by someone else and then passed along. So it's important to just keep striving anyways. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sister? Um, At the back for the other one. I can't hear you. Uh, I believe we should be worried about the end because this is the end of the hundred and two. But um, I think that the speed of life is something that should give us the, the drive and the passion to act on our ideas today. So when you have you know those ideas that sometimes just formulate in your mind, you shouldn't just wait until tomorrow. You should plant the seeds uh, now and hopefully that will help everyone better than and from the open Thank you. So, move to the other, yes, you want to say, no, yeah, no, okay, so you, do, you agree that you do, you, should, you do not sit and do nothing and uh, go with the flow, okay, second point is option, do you want to be ahead of time? The second option or third option, do you want to be ahead of time? Of course. Of course, how and why? Let me see you. How and why? I would disagree slightly that we want to be ahead of time. Okay, we want to exist in the time that we exist so that we can provide solutions that are adapted to the time of today, okay, in such a way that they create the new flow. So linking to your previous question. And like if you look at Facebook, you look at Google, you look at Apple, look at all these companies, what they do is they think outside the box to create a new flow. And they can only create that new box by thinking of what's needed today to create the future. So very good. Thank you. That's an answer. Very good. Yes? At the same time. Because I can't see, I can't hear, I can't talk, I can't think. I can't do anything. Tell us, <laughs> Arabic? Arabic, yeah. Libya. The people who are ahead of for, for example, you were mentioning you know, great businesses. A lot of great businessmen are able to see 10, 15 years from now what's going to be important. Even Steve Jobs, since you know, we're talking about these big companies, the way he used to think was you know, 10 years from now. What are people going to be doing? 
We work now, of course. We have to always work now. There's, there's no question about that. But we can't constantly be now, you know, and then five years later, we're, we're going to be five years behind everyone else. So there has to be a balance, I suppose, between the two, where you, you think ahead, you're further away from everyone else, but at the same time, you're tackling the challenges of now as well. Thank you. Sisters? doesn't necessarily mean that you're not really in today's day and age. Because you know, there are two different types of goals. You have short-term goals, which are in the next six months. And then you have long-term goals, which are more five years, ten years. Uh, this example here, for example, Steve Jobs, when he first came out with the iPhone, was in 2007. The first ever phone to not have a, a single button. And uh, look uh, ten years ahead. It's absolutely unheard of to have a phone with buttons. So uh, being ten years ahead, or being ahead of time, doesn't necessarily mean that you're not in today's day and age. Because you're still thinking about today's. Uh, the image, but you're trying to think about what's going to be, uh, what you're, you're predicting what's going to be the next train, uh, what's going to be the trend after that, and eventually what people are going to be doing after that. So it's, uh, what you're saying is it's, it's not an excuse, it's an excuse, you can be uh, uh, ahead of time and say something with today's image. See, can you see me now? Um, I'm just <coughs> trying to, to act on the two answers. I'm holding a very heavy thing in my hand, because this is a problem, this is the current problem, and moving to this place, because I know that there are a problem now existing in my society, but I'm getting my community with me, getting them to move to this area, which is what Stephen Jobs does. Who is Stephen Jobs? No, no, can, can somebody answer me, tell me his life story, from the lady's side. <clears throat> Mm. Anybody else? Well, she spoke quite a few times. Let's give a chance to somebody else. <laughs> you know it's his job, it's his life. Yeah. Go on, stand up. Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know, him? Do you know him? how he was living uh, with well, his father, his mother? And, uh, yeah. well, according to the... <laughs> he was a refugee. He was a refugee, is that right? That's Tim Cook. Okay, anybody else? No? Sorry? Brother, brother, I love you. Love me, please. Stand up, please, and tell us his story. His parents were Syrian uh, immigrants, because uh, uh, to America, is that right? No, not only one of his original parents. Original parents, stand up, please. Is your voice? Yes, I can't hear you. So, uh, original parents were actually from Syria or from Lebanon? I think so. Okay. Syria. And he was adopted yeah. as an orphan. Why? Social life. Yeah, something like that. And he was brought up as an orphan or adopted orphan. But he came or he became what he was to create all this big achievement in his life. And also, like, uh, well, we can also say he didn't do well in his education. He, he didn't do well in his education? Yeah, but he didn't give up. Um, but he didn't give up. Very good. So, three, three points in his life. Ten minutes, okay. All right. Uh, all right. Now, go. I'm, I'm focusing on this. Why? Because the social life was difficult, which actually being an adopted child after some of his original parents, none of them put him off from meeting the challenge to make the change. And did he make, was he able to make the change? Yes, he was. By the standard of the Muslims and the Arabs and so on. Okay? I'll move faster. The second challenge is, are we able to stop this speed of light, to direct the light, or to change the direction and correct it? What's our ability now? Can we either stop or direct 
or reform? <coughs> you answer some of this in your answers before. Because I'm talking about role. All this talks about role, my role. Okay? Mm. You have answered quite a few of them by saying yes, have to be ahead of time. And you mentioned some examples of the people who are pioneers and managed to change the course of life. You mentioned one of them. If you take another example like Muhammad Ali. Everybody knows Muhammad Ali. He stood for his belief, he did what he can, and he became this kind of global figure, and he became a hero for humanity. Think about Nelson Mandela. Huh? Another one. Okay. And, sorry, anybody else? Malcolm X. Martin Luther King. When you look at all these great people, Ali Aziz Begovic in Bosnia. Okay? And a lot, a lot. Mahatma Gandhi. He managed to change the course of life for the, his nation. You see, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, if, if you can't change the course of life, okay, that's the role that you need to play. Let me ask the, ask the, how many minutes now? Five. Five. Okay. There was a question about how, who are we? Are we energy, power, movement, or, or what? We are as young people. How can you define yourself? Energy, power, Movement or what? Energy. Energy. Continuous or temporary? It depends. It depends. Energy. Power? Movement? Um, I think with movement, it encompasses energy and power. Um, you're stronger in longer. So as long as you have energy and the movement, you have that power. Very good. So, energy, <coughs> movement, and power. We are energy, and we are powerful movement. Because we are the young. Because we are the people who would love to make the future. And save our community and our humanity. I have, because I have three minutes to go, four, four minutes to go. I asked you about, am I, a, uh, am I a one of the people who are having the, what do you call it? Right loop, okay. Left loop, or he has no loop. See, that's why he's, he's happy. <laughs> because he, he's not living with this, uh, his banana. Banana, banana. Okay. <laughs> you got it now? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Yes. Tell me why I have right loop, or why I have left loop, why I have uh, enough somebody to tell me that I have no loops. Could you please explain? <laughs> explain. <laughs> no, no, you don't know. It's You don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is the function of the right and the left? Yes, can you stand up, please? Come, come next to me. Come next to me. Oh. No, not oh. oh. <laughs> come on. Come on. Come, come on. She will explain to us. Huh? She will explain to us what, the, what do I mean or what does she mean by right loop and left loop. Okay? Then you uh, diagnose my sickness. Because I'm a sick man. I'm pretty sure. This is what? The right hemisphere. The right hemisphere. Is, oh, is it? I think it's logic and like intelligence, and the left is artistic and creativity. Otherwise, 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 the other way. So the right one is creativity, creativity. and yeah, creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left one is creativity and like. Right one. No, no, no. The left side. The left hemisphere. Yeah. Anyway, what do you say? Right? <laughs> yeah. The right one is... Like creativity, innovation. Yeah. And the right side is logic, reasoning, intelligence. Okay, do you agree with that? 
Yes? It's the other way around. The other way around. Can stand up, please? <laughs> Um, so a lot of things like myths, like we use 10% of our brain and people who are more left side than the right side it are, you know, myths that change with time, but maybe people are more focused on being right lobed, which is artistic, creative, or out of the box, whereas left is more rational, logical, scientific, mathematical. It's the other way around. Okay. Fine. Now you know the diagnosis. Or the, the one who does not have any loops. What 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 you describe them? Okay. Absent. Huh? Absent. Okay. Absent-minded, lacking. Usually the majority. <laughs> now you answer. Okay. Now, now you answer. Am I right loop man, left loop man, or no loop man? Both. Both. <laughs> you can't be both. You can be a male and female at the same time. You got it? Come on, don't be shy. Yes, sister. I think you... I think you demonstrate both sides. Is it? Yeah. Um, based on the fact that you do appear to be quite creative and think, you know, laterally... Maybe I'm fooling you. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, but uh, I noticed you're also right-handed. Uh, I'll do not. Because right? I saw you scribbling on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's yeah. yeah, you're right-handed. Because he's an Arab. He's an Arab. <laughs> so, with that being said, the creative side is more right-sided, but you're right-handed which means that actually your um, left lobe is dominant. <coughs> so I do, I do do your own research, so yeah. But anyway, so you have like both sides like active, I think, and um, often you could have potentially been a left-handed writer, um, but sometimes I've noticed, I don't know if it's true, I'm just like coming up with stuff here. But um, I'll tend to force their kids to write with the right hand because it's better, right? <laughs> because the left hand is like the two gloves have on it. So I'm um, comfortable describing your right hand at the time. So essentially it's left um, right hand dominant. Okay, so, thank you. Anybody challenge your answer? Because we have got two minutes to go. Yes. I think from my observation today, if I hadn't met you before, I'd say you're more of a creative guy because you're asking questions that are quite out of the box, but not a general question with that. So I would say you're right handed, right? So I don't have left. You have one, man. Thank you. Yes, you have one. Thank you. Uh, I agree. I think you're more right than left. It's not per se the concepts that you describe because they're quite philosophical, but more the language they use. Speed of life, very metaphorical, like poetic, so I think more right and left. Sister, first, then you. Um, your logical side is probably dominant, but I'm sure there's still some creativity in you and So she's saying I'm left to. Mm. Um, because I must have had some creativity to make a picture of anything. Okay, okay, thank you. You are the sister after that. <laughs> you have to speak to the people. I mean, just, just judging, even though you're asking creative questions, uh, you're monitoring your thing uh, very well. Uh, you're making sure that the answers that were said were the ones that you wanted to make sure that, which you would show that there is some sort of logic uh, behind it and the rationale. Uh, for example, the way you excellently demonstrated when you were saying, putting the way and working towards uh, a destination. So <coughs> you have logic at the same time, yeah, because you're using right hand, which also shows that you do, uh, as in your, your left hand side of your, your brain is you know, kind of controlling your. So I'd say you demonstrate both quite uh, I think you do demonstrate both, um, but maybe like I think dominant creativity also has logic. But you have to think about obviously they're both active, but you have to utilize both anyway. So it's like you could be as creative as you want, but you're not doing anything with it. It doesn't really matter. So it's realizing your capabilities in both. And then finding your strengths, harnessing both of them and using them together to get to where you need to go.
Okay, thank you. So I used to be a medical doctor, but I never realized. And even my thesis was on the brain, central nervous system. But I was not so intelligent enough, like you, to analyze the right function, and uh, the right loop function and the left loop function. And I thank you for guiding me and for encouraging me, motivating me. And uh, now we can give the microphone to this Okay. Thank you, you very much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have a couple of minutes, inshallah, to we'll move on to Abdul Rahman's session. So, if anyone has any questions they'd like to ask Dr. Hani in this uh, wonderful opportunity, please do shout them out now. Please put your hand up, stand up, do the usual that we've been doing the past hours. Okay. <laughs> 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 any questions? Yes. I'm glad, I'm glad you. I was, I was shocked. Medical doctor in uh, Gazi and Tab in Turkey was telling me that you are a right loop. I said, What? I didn't know what, what right loop was, what left loop was, but she said I'm right loop, and they put her in my WhatsApp group at the right loop system. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell her how she finds it? Um, I think if you go online, you can sort of get. Um, you can kind of get general guidelines as to which, um, what sort of uh, personalities you exhibit or what you tend to prefer. But it's all a label because you use both anyway, so it doesn't really matter that much. I guess you can identify which is more dominant so that you can cater the things that you do in your life and the way you learn and such and so forth, uh, cater to what your preference is. But, but why is it important to know which one dominates? You can point out some Very good question. Why? Why should we know that you are a right loop or a left loop? Why? Because maybe that you want to use some creative people to do certain jobs. Or some, the other side of the it, some reasoning people to do the other jobs. So you have several servants, which most of them should be reasoning. And you have leaders, which you need to find amongst them the most creative, who will be able to make the change. But without the reasoning of the left loop, which is the several servants, Leader cannot function by himself alone, or himself alone. My question is actually about the two. I just wanted to ask, from your illustrious career over the many years of being active, who would you say has been the most, uh, what is the most impact in your decision making and life and through? This is another talk. <laughs> but I can give you two, 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 two or three leads, characters. Apart from, from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, apart from all the great things, this is actually untouchable. It's my mother, because when I was young, she was telling me two things. Uh, don't look up, because if you look up like this, you have headache. She means that if you look up to the people better than yourself, you'll have headache, and you'll be upset. Mix with poor people to be happy. This was her reminder. The second one was my uh, wife, because she was and is my backbone 24 7. So you have to marry somebody like my wife. <laughs> there are a lot of them here in the room. But some, some, some of us are blinded, are blindfolded. But I've got short sight of that. Could be one of them. This is my wife. Okay. The third one is my father, because he is. Uh, he showed his credibility, and he was a professor of Islamic law in Azhar, his integrity, as even he was working for the age of seven to support his family. Apart from this, there's a lot of people really in this society. But those are the people. Actually, okay, you want the microphone again? Yes, please. Uh, Dr. Hani, I think that's all the questions that we'll be taking. Um, should we take a couple minutes break, or should we just go straight into your short term? It's up to you. How, how's everyone?